had a fantastic question come in uh, from one of the viewers of the first lighting video, uh, which back in the day was done with a cube, a sphere, a cylinder, and some lights. Um, just because we're in this scene now um, with another tutorial I'm working on with the God rays and everything, I'd love to answer it here. And the question is, why do you need to bake all of your lights with emissive materials? Can't I do it somehow with a moving or dynamic object? And the, the short answer is, um, if you have an object that is going to be moving through the scene and it is dynamic and not marked as static and or light map static, um, then it will always have an issue receiving lights unless you have a light probe group or a light probe volume. Uh, the volume is something that is more um, friendly with 2023 and onward, but 2022, I can show the process uh, using a light probe group here, and I'll explain a bit of what I'm doing and, and how it's happening, show you some examples along the way. I hope this will be extremely helpful um, because this is not a simple question. This is definitely an intermediate to advanced uh, practice. So what I want to do just to show a bit of what we're going to be working with is I'm going to create a sphere. Uh, we'll just say that this is a glowing sphere that is uh, some color. So I've made the sphere uh, and put it in the background near the dark area of my scene just so I'll know when it's working for sure. Then I want to create a material uh, usually I would do that in the materials folder, but we're moving quickly today. So I'm just going to do it here. I'm going to drag it up to my sphere. And while I'm up here, I'm just going to rename this sphere. Awesome. So this sphere has this light material on it. I only need to do a few things. Um, so I need to turn on, I don't, I want to turn on use emission intensity, turn it to red maybe to make it something interesting that contrasts with the, the light that we have coming in here. And we're going to want this quite high. So I'm going to pull it way up like that. Let's do, what does 250 nits look like? Pretty bright. Great. Um, then I want to make global illumination here baked. Um, the last thing that I need to do um, is set it to static for now. And then I'm going to come over to lighting and generate lighting. So I'll speed this next part up just a little bit, but you can already see how this red light is affecting the scene and it is baking everything out into light maps. All right, so that just finished baking. And this is what we see our environment's going to look like immediately with baked global illumination. Um, I actually think that looks really cool. So that's awesome. I'm gonna turn off my gizmos for a second just so I can really take in what I'm looking at. Come over here to the game view where I can see my particles still running. What I may do just for right now is turn off the particles just so I'm not overly taxing my system. The best strategy I would say for right now in 2022 is to grab a light probe group. So let me grab one of those. And when selecting, uh, I notice that this gives me an error. So the light probe system is not active because the pipeline uses probe volumes and the systems cannot coexist. To disable probe volumes, make sure the feature is disabled in the lighting section of the active HDRP asset. Um, so you can get into your HDRP asset a few different ways. Uh, edit project settings, um, and then going into graphics and all that good stuff. And this takes me into here. Um, you can also just from your assets here, search HDRP. And once you open up HDRP, come down here where I just had lighting open. Um, I'm in the HDRP high fidelity asset and I want to turn this from probe volumes to light probe groups. All right, so the error is now gone. We're all good. And 
what I want to do now is turn back on gizmos so I know what I'm looking at. This is the light probe group, which is great. And I want this to be a pretty high resolution. Um, I can even demonstrate why. Um, so let me do that first. I'm going to make this low resolution at first, and then we'll come back in and do high afterwards. Um, so if I duplicate these out, I've just hit edit light probes. I'm hitting control D to duplicate out the probes themselves so that I can make a well-defined environment with the probes. And this is usually about how I would do this, but because our light is so intense, um, I'm likely going to want to push it even further. But for now, let's do that. Um, maybe even come in here and do one more duplication upward like that. Okay. So because we have done this now, if I create a cube and I set it over here and let me duplicate it and do another cube over here, we see that there is no light impacting either. Once we build out our scene, now that we have the light probes here, um, it will Ideally, these will both be affected, and we'll see how they are highlighted within the light probe group, and we can see how that works. Um, without the light probe group, if I marked one of these as static and left the other one as dynamic, then only the static would receive the light because we are baking light maps. The light probe group essentially gives you a bunch of spheres that take lighting and can then use how the sphere is lit to infer how the object should be lit. Um, thus allowing you to light dynamic objects with things like emissive lights and baked lighting. So let me go ahead and generate lighting again. I'm going to change this from CPU to GPU. Generate lighting, and we will speed this up again. I'll see you in a second. You're going to notice here as it begins to finish up, which I assume we're 30 seconds from being done, that these cubes should be lit up. We'll see if that happens or not. They're likely the last things that will be lit, though. There we go and now they are lit. Um, so these are dynamic objects that I can move through the scene and you can see which spheres these boxes are pulling from to get the information that they need to know what they should look like. The issue comes here where there's just not quite enough definition. Theoretically, that would be even brighter, I would think. And it just looks like it's picking up spheres from too far apart for me to be happy with. So I want a little bit more resolution. So the way that I'm going to do that is uh, first I'll just delete out one cube because I don't need two. I was more just doing it for reference. And I want to come back out to the light probe group, go to the inspector, edit light probe positions. And then what I want to do, especially right here, is duplicate these, pull them over. And I'm going to do something like that where I probably don't need as much over here since my light is right there. Um, really, the best practice is just to have it where light is rapidly changing. And unfortunately, I have a really blown out bright light right here that just looks cool that I want to keep. Um, so I kind of need it in all directions from here if I'm going to keep the cube roughly in this area. So I'm going to rebake my lights again. And ideally, it's going to finish up right here. We may see a slight change in the cube, having given more resolution to these spheres around it. Looks like a little bit more darkness in the close patch there. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so anyways, that's starting to work exactly as we intended. Um, now if I animate this, 
Um, I'll do a very quick animation just to prove the point. I'll do timeline, come down here. If you're interested in how we did this, just check back into part one. Drag our cube down, create the animator. And then over here, I'm going to click on my cube, lock the inspector, come back to my timeline, begin the recording. Going to, where are we? It did not lock the inspector. It set it to static. That was not the button I was looking for. There we go. Now I should be able to add a key. And let's say here I'm going to do, I don't want to offset my uh, timing here too much. Um, just because I already have it looping at three, however many seconds we're doing, if this is 30 frames a second. Um, maybe I'll have it be just a bit longer. So I'm going to move this way over here. And I'll add a key here. Update key, because I already added the key upon moving it. And then let me come out to 300 and move it all the way back. And if we want to have it be exact, I will right click and copy its world transforms. Then I'll come back out here into this and I will paste. Now, theoretically, it's going to continue doing that motion. It's a dynamic object. None of the lighting is baked. It's, it's leveraging our light probes here uh, in the scene. So let me stop recording, hit play, and let's just watch what happens. Let me turn the particles on as well. Pretty cool there. So if I come back over here, make sure that we are playing focused, then I can even come in here and watch the scene moving around. Uh, last thing I want to do is turn on the particles, which I did not turn on because my inspector was still locked. So that is how you would use a dynamic object with a baked light. So the last thing I wanna do is just pull the camera out a little bit. I'm gonna pull my game view over slightly, come back into here, turn on my gizmos, pull the camera out just so I can see a bit more. And then I think we're in a good spot where I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, let this play out. I hope that you learned a lot in this. Uh, understand light probe groups now, dynamic versus static lit objects. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.